And today I'm going to show you guys how to do your own DIY RC dune buggy with a basic RTR and an off the shelf cage. And the only tools that we're going to need is some cutters, a razor, and some zip ties. Stay tuned. So here it is, my RC dune buggy. And something about these two wheel drive rear engine dune buggies has just got me super stoked lately because these things are some of the most fun I've ever had with an RC. It's just holding this thing wide at the beach or in the dunes and just watching it eat and crack wheelies. So, you know, with these things with the Lexan bodies can be fun. You know, I have footage of the Megalodon that we built and I tried to do a cockpit with the Tamiya section. And for whatever reason, I just always admired the XO. You know, the Axel XO had that four wheel drive Terra buggy with the cage. And when we were working on this RC pre-runner, I realized that I had this gatekeeper cage just sitting on the ground and I kept kind of looking at it, kept kind of looking at it and I said, you know, if I cut a few areas and use a razor and just cut out the bottom and cut a few areas, I wonder if it would drop on and actually be proportionate to this buggy. And I'll kind of show you guys how like the battery change process goes. So we just got two zip ties in the rear two zip ties up front, and we leave the zip ties up front connected, and then I just cut these rear ones off, and then the whole cage kind of floats up like that. So I got two zip ties where the body post would be for the trophy rat, and then when you take the rear zip ties off, it just allows you to kind of like flex down on that, and I mean, it's it's not hinged or anything, it's just flexing the body posts kind of out of the way, just on the plastic, so. And I just thought this is pretty simple, so you just pop those zip ties off, get to your battery, put this back down, two more zip ties, and then you're back to the dunes, you know what I mean, so. It's not super easy to get your battery in and out, but it's totally doable, and then when you rock these two zip ties in the rear, it just goes through this post on the cage, and then around where the body post came off of the chassis. And then I'll show you guys putting the zip ties back in, so. I'm pretty stoked, because we just got a hobby wing system in this thing. And you know, the other one has been fine. Like on a flat beach, I think that 3300, like the stock ESC and power is fine. Even tugging around this cage, I mean, it, it definitely, it, it shredded pretty good. So it's just the load from the paddle tires going uphill where it's like, man, I, I'd like to be kind of cracking wheelies up that hill or at least, you know, going full tilt boogie when we get to the top. So, and then that's just pretty, that's my simple solution to, to get the cage to, you know, and I wrecked it hard with these zip ties on. It didn't do nothing. So, I mean, all this stuff is designed to flex. So it's in a perfect place because it's attached to the existing body mount. So these short course trucks, they know that they take a good tumbling. We upgraded the motor and ESC on our RC dune buggy to a hobby wing system, and it's running a five millimeter motor shaft bore. And that makes it so it has a bigger pinion. So the pinion actually won't fit with the spur cover. So I was kind of just going around the house and I found this little container for Dremel bits and I cut off the bottom and then notched it so that it would fit on the spur cover and then kind of sanded it flush. And it's just so funny that it's like almost perfect, perfect fit. And then I might just paint the whole thing later, but I'm gonna basically glue this in place and then that gives enough room so that I can actually go up in bigger pinions as well, so. So recently we just did a little power upgrade on this thing. We put in a Hobby Wing Easy Run Brushless. It's a 4,000 kV motor. And that's paired with an Easy Run Max 10 SET ESC, also from Hobby Wing. We're running an 11.13 cell battery, and we went down one tooth on the pinion gear. So I'm hoping that it'll have a little bit of torque. We tested out front, and it looks really promising compared to the stock power setup. So, and we'll just mount up this pre-filter just to show you guys how everything kind of packages in here. We get our antenna and our ESC extension, and I just got that Velcro strip just down on the bottom of the chassis, and then I kind of bunch up the nose just so it fits like that. And I'm just gonna take off the hood to show you guys how we get the front mounted up with these zip ties. So just four little screws to get this front hood panel off. And that's kind of what I wanted to share with you guys, man. These, these easy ones, I think there's too much emphasis on like fabricating 3D printing where this one really resonates with me. You know, to be able to rock four zip ties and a razor and come up with something that just looks cool, dude, is it blows my mind and I love it. You know what I mean? This is the kind of stuff I feel like we need to get back to, is just getting creative with this stuff, so. And with the panels off, you can see a little easier what I'm talking about. So I just took the body post out, and this is for that DB10 body mount for the front. And we're just gonna run a zip tie corner to corner to that body mount, just to suck this front end down. And it's just so easy, dude, like, you know, just zip ties like straight over the top. It's crazy. And then we just get these tight. 
loosen up the tops. And then we're just fold these down, flush into these little nooks. And then the body panel fits directly over that, so. And then this is just an axial five pod light bar. So I used a little longer screw and kind of trimmed on the inside so it would actually screw into the existing cage and it kind of made it flex a little bit. And these are just the stock element body panels that I took out, hit out with some PS5 black Tamiya just over the existing. I took all the original decals off with some WD-40, cleaned them and just took them out and repainted them so they'd be black, painted the inside and the outside. Left my little interior driver stock and the rest is just pretty much decals. There's a bunch of different sand tires that you guys can get, you know what I mean? As long as they're a 2.2, 3.0 tire, they'll work with these rims. And these are actually the original associated tires that I mounted to some Losi Bahare rims. And then these are the pre-mounted associated sand paddles. And then we got a sand ladder in the back, which I just kind of threw that on just for looks. These are some Traxxas UDR shock reservoirs that I just had lying around that we zip tied to the rear. And then this is an Amazon light bar that's actually programmable. So this is a blue anodized you'll see in the pictures and I just took it out, hit it with some flat black on the rim, put it back together and then just literally tapped it directly into this fake radiator with these four screws. Super simple setup. And then to get to the power button, I just reach around this front fender and just kind of pull down. You can see this light bar. And then on this front LED setup, this is actually just the stock element LEDs that came with it that I actually dipped in some of that Tamiya lens paint. And we do have a dune trip planned for this thing coming very soon. We got that new motor and ESC in this thing and I can't wait to see this thing slinging some sand. So hit that like and subscribe. Do for Dale. Catch you guys later. Peace.